so it's time we are holding out in about 15 minutes <laughs> do you feel nervous or do you feel ready it's always a little weird taking her out of the water yeah i think we're ready as long as the travel lift works fine <laughs> So I'm gonna set up some cameras and yeah, should get going. Bill is gonna come by and help with the lines and Grace is probably gonna help with Sierra a little bit so I can film. It's great to have some more hands. I always feel a bit nervous with those coming out of the water. It's like your house getting lifted. <laughs> it's a little crazy, but I think it should be good and uh, it should be pretty smooth and quick. So, see how this goes. Kind of crazy to see her out of the water, huh? Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know, I think she still looks cool even out of the water. Such a big boat, keel and all that. We've hauled her out in Seattle in Mexico, in Australia, in Malaysia, Grenada, and now here. So it's like the sixth time doing this. It's still pretty weird, you know, like all the, the feelings of seeing your home come out of the water and like suspended by a few cables and straps, it's still odd. But... It's weird to think that you're living in there. It doesn't yeah. look that big, does No, it? it's enough space for us though. Yeah. Yeah. Like you live in that little cocoon. Yeah. <laughs> Well done, sir. Thank you. Well done. How long have you been doing this? Long time? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been in the industry probably for about 25 years. Wow. You know, doing travel well, for about 13, 14. You shoot her in that thing in here like a glove. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for keeping her safe. Absolutely. This is the story of Delos, a sailboat adventurizing around the world for the past 10 years. And now, we embark on our greatest adventure of all. Come join us as we take to the high seas and travel the world with the newest member of our crew. If you enjoy Delos videos, please subscribe. It's a great way to support our channel. All right, this is Ryan. How's He's uh, graciously offered some services to help. I, I wonder if you're gonna grow to regret your decision. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. <laughs> Plan of attack. I think the first thing that's on my mind is we got to make sure that uh, we can get the sea coat coating off. So the sea coat coating is the stuff that we put on in Grenada. Uh, it was about what two two years ago now, and it uh, it worked pretty well. I mean the boat was pretty clean when she came out. Um, although we did have to like clean it every couple weeks for the soft growth. During the last haul out, we tested a hydrosonic anti fouling system coupled with a slippery hard paint with no copper. The hydrosonic system did a great job of preventing hard growth, however it didn't inhibit soft growth at all. When we sat without moving for long periods of time, I had to dive the boat every few weeks. We're going to continue our anti-fouling experiment by keeping the ultrasonic system and looking for an eco-friendly paint that does a better job of inhibiting soft growth. Anyway, we're going to try and find some other paint, uh, something environmentally friendly if we can while we're here and redo it and so the big question is can we get that stuff off and how hard is it to get off and get down to the epoxy coat so I think we'll try like maybe some sanding and maybe some scraping and maybe some brushing and just do a test and then we can paint after that so we'll, we'll take it from there all right sounds like a plan yeah <laughs> 
I mean, I think with the machine, that's gonna go pretty quick. I think like an 80 grit, it'll just, it'll just go nuts. So we had two spots where the barrier coat for some reason didn't adhere well. Uh, so I'm gonna grind those down and see what the reason is. But that right there. All right, so I've got the bad parts ground off. You do have to go out quite big, you know, like this bubble was like this, right? But I went way out just to make sure that I got all the parts. I've cleaned it. I've put some acid wash on it just to get any of the bits of uh, rust that have been on the metal since it is a, a steel or cast iron keel. And then I'm drying it. And then the next part will be to seal this with some filler. And then we'll put the primer over it. And so I'm just doing a quick little sealer coat since I just put the rust inhibitor on. So this will seal it off for moisture right away. And then uh, I'll do the filler next. Right, so we've got uh, our epoxy and we're adding a little bit of this filler and I just do it to consistency. This stuff is super nasty, that's why I'm wearing this mask, it's like really cancerous, but I just get it to, it's like a thick paste. Um, you can do it however you like, but if I do it thick like this, then it, it sticks and doesn't run on vertical surfaces. Like that's about perfect. And you just spread it on like sort of putty. How long does it take for that to hard? Uh, sandable little, because this is slow stuff, it'll take six to eight hours. I don't like to use the fast stuff in the heat because you never know just how quick it's going to go off, right? Right. How's the sanding going? It's going well. Um, it's coming off quicker than I think we thought it was going to come off. Yeah, it's not so bad, huh? No, I mean, I think it's a big difference that you're doing this year and a half after last time. And so, um, a good vacuum, uh, sander and it's, it's knocking it down. Yeah, it's coming out real nice. It's looking pretty good. And that's the thin layer that we're trying to get through. I don't know if you can see it, but you can definitely feel the difference. Arms burning yet? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, imagine. That's all right. Pretty good. Yeah, it's getting there. Uh, I'm going to take the prop off because we got to uh, do a little bit of work to that and uh, service the seals and the bearings. a seal in it for the keep the oil in so I'm just loosening it up a little bit by tapping it back and forth. This is a disposable part. Okay so you can see how this guy sits on the shaft. Not too worn. You can see where the seals there's a groove right here where the inner seal's been riding. This probably could have gone another year or so before it would start leaking. so far it's pretty crazy it's like i feel very grown up <laughs> for some reason the nugget likes as i'm it. sitting on the floor feeding my job <laughs> it's like a little different on the floor. she doesn't like this chair to be so long <laughs> no it's, it's out of the action she's sort of, no. you want to be in the center of action huh i know she does she's like you but things have been going good. I've been waking up early every morning, uh, trying to be out at the boat bar at what, 7, 7.30, and uh, getting a lot of stuff done. Today's Saturday, so I think I'll just come back. We can hang out. We'll do some other fun stuff. 
I'll see you soon. I love you. Bye, baby nuggets. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Off to work I go. We'll miss you. We'll miss you too. Don't have too much fun. No. Aw. I never have to leave you guys. I know. I have to go for the whole day. I'll be back. Bye, Nugs. Oh. Oh, get out of the way, ducks. Oh, I feel sad to say goodbye to Brian and have him like do all the boat work himself. Uh, he has some people helping him though, but it's definitely different and now with Sierra because she can't really be at the yard crawling around, you know, it's like so dangerous. Good, good morning. It is day two in the boat yard, really day one and a half because we only got a half day working yesterday. But uh, everything's turned out real good. We were able to get some seals and the thrust bearing or the wearing bearing changed here. Uh, I was able to do some patchwork on this. So today I'm gonna be sanding this and getting it smooth, getting it ready to prime. That'll take a minute. The bottom's turning out really well. We're almost done there. So we got a lot of it done. So we're gonna get this to the primer, which is basically where it's at. And then we're gonna try uh, a new different type of paint. I was just speaking with the manufacturer and we're gonna do another test of uh, a product that contains no copper, which I'm excited to try. Then we're gonna go from there. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Here we go. Making excellent progress today. Ryan, the Superman, is rocking on the sander. Port side is done. Starboard side is nearly done. And as we go, we're taping off the bootstripe because we might as well touch that up while we do this. I'm gonna actually take the bow thruster down. And since last time I almost smashed Alex's foot. There's a little bit of miscommunication and it sort of just fell out of the bottom of the boat. We're gonna put a boat stand under it this time, just in case. And then we're gonna drop it down and service that, replace the seals and all that good stuff, so. All right. Okay, time to look at the bow thruster. Uh, here it is, and this is the problem. Underneath this, there is a seal. And that seal has obviously gone bad, and that's where the water is coming up. And so you can see how the spring is gone and the seal is gone and that's why we were leaking. So we have to undo this bolt right here. Then inside there's a couple of Allen screws. We undo those and then the whole thing slides down. And then I can uh, service the oil and the seals and everything else. And that's about it. Shame on me. We pulled the ball thruster out and I didn't film it. Wah, wah. Anyway, there's where it comes out of. My plan of having that in the way worked really good. And there it is. Now I just gotta drain the oil, replace the seals. And this slides off and then there's a seal under it. Doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape there. That's good. Look at that, that's the spring. So the spring is just in pieces. That's exactly why it started leaking. That is trashed. That's just really satisfying. Isn't it satisfying? Feels great to see how quick it just yeah, cleans right up really and nice, huh? gets shiny. Is this the original prop from? It is. Wow, so all the miles right here. It's got a lot of miles on it. So today, today is day three at the yard and uh, we're making pretty good progress. We had one setback and that we didn't actually uh, get the clear coat off of the boot stripe enough. So we're having to spend a few more hours sanding that. And by mean we, I mean Superman Ryan. He's an animal, he's still going at it. What, uh, whatever possessed you to come and spend a week of hard labor with me in the dirt and dust of the boatyard? 
when you and I are the same age, and I've watched uh, you guys' videos pretty much since they came out. I mean, I just followed your lead and decided to live life and make that more important than, um, than uh, working. So I took a year or two or three years off, and uh, when I had an opportunity to find a chance to give back to you guys, I felt like uh, this is the way, this is my style of giving back. So yeah, coming out here and, and sweating together has, has been great. That's cool. Yeah, no, it's actually been because we've been here every day for like eight to ten hours. I don't know, man. I think just having you here has probably saved me like not twice the time, but three times the time because you work so more efficiently with somebody else. I agree. But thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Hey, we appreciate it. Totally welcome, man. This has been great for me, too. So we appreciate uh, coming out. to. I love it when, when sanding and grinding and painting <laughs> and playing in the dust is great. <laughs> I, I will have to say, I know on day two, you came over here wondering if I was going to still be here or not, but we plugged <laughs> along. Uh, cool. And uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm installing the line cutter for the prop. So this is uh, a line cutter and basically this part mounts on the on the shaft and spins this part stays fixed and uh, if any lines get caught on the prop it uh, these two blades come together and it just slices them up I need to cut these bushings out to separate the metal uh, from the wearing bearing and the prop because they're dissimilar metals. And that's it. Things are going pretty good. It's a beautiful day. Pretty sure when I rebuilt this prop in Grenada that I torqued these nuts too much because I've just loosened this one, and so you can see how it's it's very free, and that'll allow because this prop, you know, when it goes through the water and you engage the transmission, these blades swing like this to reduce resistance instead of being like this, and so that is nice and free. Whereas these other blades that I haven't adjusted yet, it's like. It's sticky, you know, it takes quite a bit of water pressure to rotate it, so we're losing, we're losing some speed there. But that's how it should be. And so we'll just have to do our best cleaning it without uh, that, right? Say to the world I die if we were falling apart Going away, smiling as we're falling apart yeah, so we got it all taped up yesterday. Uh, so today I'm gonna clean it, wash it with the brushing liquid, and then we'll paint it. Uh, get the first coat on, then it's gonna dry for eight hours. I'll do a light sand and then paint it again. Well, Jeff dropped by to say hi and I promptly put him to work. I don't, okay. I don't teach you to drop by. <laughs> How's it going? It's going pretty well, I'm getting there. Yeah, looks nice. Good got job. Another, uh, 20 feet to go. Yeah, like I said, buy a smaller boat, it's a lot less work. So Jeff is also the kind soul that has let, it, let us been using his address to ship all of our various parts and stuff to. And he's also letting us stay in his apartment. And so I've been taking hot showers uh, twice a day, which is actually not very common. And Karen and Sierra are able to like relax there during the day. Do you like living in a house, Sierra? So much space, huh? To play? <laughs> yeah. We have borrowed this sweet, sweet apartment from two of our friends, Jeff and Cameron. And for us to be able to stay here is so nice. Because like you can't live on the boat in the yard with a baby. Like it's hard enough as it is. So be able to stay in this apartment is absolutely lifesaver. It's a really sweet place too. It's perfect for us. We go out here. Bill and Grace are staying in here because they're doing a bunch of work on their boat too. So, and then we have the living room and the kitchen. As you can see, I'm wearing like <laughs> comfy pants and stuff because it's pretty cold. We're pumping the air conditioning here and I feel a little bit bad for Brian because I'm just sitting here in the air con. 
I'm trying to do so much computer work though, as soon as Sierra lets me. Yeah, it's just been amazing to live the land life for a little bit. You know, sitting in a sofa. Land life has a lot of perks. One of the perks is definitely a washer and dryer. It's great to be able to take nice walks with Sierra and just go out in the neighborhood for a little bit. I wonder how Brian is doing. I think he's probably sweating a lot, doing a lot of boat work. Today might actually be the hottest of the hot of the hot. See that temperature gauge? That is 40 degrees Celsius and it is maxed out. It is on the end of the scale. Since that thing's maxed out, I decided to use my temperature gun and see how hot it is. 109.6 degrees, 110, that's crazy. That's just insane. Hey Ryan, I use the temperature gauge. It says it's 109.7 in the boat right now. It feels it outside too. Where are we at? Let's see, I'm trying to not get it in your eyes. Yeah, 107. On my forehead? Yeah. It feels it. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And I just wanted to give everybody that supported our project over the years a huge shout out. Uh, you guys are the ones that make it possible for us to continue making the videos without the influence and bias of corporate sponsors, which means that we can make the videos that we like and we hope the videos that you like as well. Yeah, so if you want to support the videos, head to svdalos.com forward slash beer and send us some beer love. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Hope have you have an awesome day. day. Cheers. Bye. Mm, <sighs> morning beer. Mm. Just walked up to the boat this morning and people are so kind. They like leave gifts for us. They have some idea that I like whiskey, which is true. So we got that, which is really nice. And a bottle of wood for reserve, which I absolutely love. That's so nice. And then this one's totally different. This one is like tools, like some Loctite and a countersink bit. <laughs> and so, oh, I know who this is from. This is somebody that stopped by that runs a nut and bolt shop here. And I told him I was having trouble finding nylon bolts of this size and so he brought me two of those he must have dropped it off yesterday after i left nice people thank you for sending the gifts appreciate that and i will put them to good use uh, jeff kindly volunteered his labor again this morning thank you jeff and so this morning we're just going to go over it with uh, like a 220 grit we're going to scuff it up a little bit we will wipe uh, the sanding or the paint dust off and then we'll go with another coat Oh, the boot stripe. It's not bad work, is it? No, it's actually it's actually quite therapeutic. You see, I got it a little bit heavy right here when I first started before I had my method down and now there's a little run there, but I hit that a little bit with the paper. Let's sort that out real quick. Uh, I found uh, another problem. I was taking a look at the through hole for the gray water tank on the outside and it is Nasty, nasty, nasty. It's like it's so corroded. It's the original one. It's starting to fall apart. So this is just glass here. But the pipe is encased in fiberglass and the corrosion doesn't go past this part, which is in the water. So it would be a huge, huge, huge job to grind that pipe out and re-encase it. So I think what I might do is just pick at this and make sure that the rest of the pipe is intact and that I can repair this part and seal the hole back up with like some epoxy and some filler or something. I'm trying to get it out from uh, the inside the engine room and of course it's like a super tight space. Not a lot of room, but I gotta unscrew it because if that thing goes, then it's, it's like bad news. So uh, I think I'll spend a little bit of time messing around with it. So this is the old ball valve. That damaged part actually only goes back about 
that far. So I think the right choice is to use a little bit of glass and filler and epoxy to repair the damage, cover up the metal in the pipe again. So I'll mix up a little batch of epoxy. I'll spread it out in there, smooth it out and keep it from getting any worse. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. So uh, I'll let that dry and then I'll just have to go after it with a little bit of a file and some sanding. But uh, I've got the, the edge built back up and I've got the epoxy and the filler like pretty far up in there with the screwdriver. Uh, so it's covering the glass and up into the good part of the metal pipe. So should be good to go. This is a new thing we're gonna try out for these guys. It's supposed to be some prop coating. Um, oh, we also don't wanna paint. Yeah, the five. In, so you leave that whole thing, I guess, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, so it's supposed to be a super slick prop coating that helps with growth on the prop. Oh, it's black, huh? Yeah. Well, this is what the prop looks like now. Nice and shiny and clean. So we said not super thick, not super thin, just sort of in the middle and then let it dry for like an hour and then one more coat. That's about it. So it's Triton Hull. Well, we'll see how it goes. It's black now. All right, we've got the last coat of the bootstripe on the red part. We're peeling off the tape. Show us what you got, mad taping skills. Oh, look at that. Pretty smooth, dude. Yeah, nice. Well done, sir. Well done. So this is uh, the three instrument depth, speed, and temperature through hole transducer, NMEA 2000 connection. So once you plug it into the bus, you get all three readings out of it. The old one stops sending temperature for some reason. Uh, so I like to put just a little bit of uh, zinc spray on it, anti-fouling spray to keep uh, this guy spinning, although it probably will clog up anyway, they always do. But um, yeah, that's it. Up next on Delos, like it, yeah. we apply a fresh new coat of bottom paint and get her ready to splash. Yeah, that's definitely different now when, um, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Retake. You have so many new toys that mom got you on Amazon. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> it's time to drive your car using that triangle. 